I've watched a couple of old movies recently. One was a Western that I had never seen before. The other was a war movie that I had watched before. Although as I watched it this time, I realized that I didn't really remember much from the beginning of it. Much of what I remembered about it was toward the end of the movie. Well, these movies had some big name stars. At least they were big names back in the day. In one movie, you had Jimmy Stewart, Dean Martin, and Raquel Welch. The other movie starred Frank Sinatra. Well, as you can imagine, these two movies were very different in a lot of ways. I mean, just from the fact that one's a Western and one's a war movie. But they had at least one thing in common. Now, I don't want to spoil it for you if you ever get a chance to watch either of these movies. So I won't tell you the name of them. Although, you know, these are older movies. So I don't guess it matters too much. But in both movies, the main actors, the stars, they died near the end of the story. Dean Martin, Jimmy Stewart, Frank Sinatra, the big names that were first in the movie credits, the stars that drew people to watch the films. At the end of the movie, they died. The Western, it ended with Dean Martin and Jimmy Stewart buried. As Raquel Welch, by the way, goes riding off with somebody else. The war movie ends with Frank Sinatra being shot by the Nazis and lying on the railroad track as the train of escaped prisoners of war he had helped goes traveling off to Switzerland and to freedom. But not him. Just as he was reaching out for somebody's hand to help him onto that train, he was shot. Sad endings in some ways. Others survived, but the big names, they didn't make it. You know, if the Bible was an old movie, there'd be many headliners. Abraham, Moses, David, Paul, others. But the main star, the one whose name would be first and be in the biggest letters on the marquee of the theater would be Jesus. The need for a savior is shown in the Old Testament and in those scriptures, he's the one being pointed to and whose coming was foretold. And then, of course, in the New Testament, the Gospels give us the actual account of his coming and his life and ministry. And then he's the one who's there at the end of the book to ride in on his white horse to save the day and to defeat evil, to judge all nations, and to reign forever as king. I mean, he's the main star. But as you read the Gospels, that tell us about his life and ministry, in the end, he dies too. The main character is killed, and he's buried. But unlike those movies I watched, that wasn't the end of the story. That wasn't how it ended. Jesus wasn't left hanging on the cross. Jesus wasn't left dead and buried in a tomb. He rose again. He was resurrected, and he still lives today. But we make sure we don't forget his death. Why? Because he told us not to forget it, for one thing, and because of the significance of his death. It's important. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we'll begin reading at verse 25, verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. This is, of course, the Apostle Paul recounting to the Corinthians of what Jesus did shortly before his crucifixion. He instituted a memorial. Now, a memorial is something that we do to help us remember some person or some event. This is Memorial Day weekend. Tomorrow is Memorial Day. It's set aside to help us remember those who gave their lives in service to our country. 
If you've been watching the news, there are memorials that have been set up in Texas, like there have been in other places under similar circumstances, where people bring flowers and gifts and other things at that site of the school shooting in order to honor and remember the lives of those children and teachers who died there. From what I saw at the school in Texas, it looked like, among other things, that they had some crosses erected with the names of the students and the teachers on those crosses. Well, Jesus instituted a memorial, something by which his disciples would remember his death and its significance. And it wasn't flowers or a monument. Interestingly enough, it did have to do with a cross, though, didn't it? But it was the Lord's Supper or communion. When Jesus took the bread and the cup, he told the disciples, do this in remembrance of me. Sometimes our, we have communion tables that have that engraved on them. And that's one of the reasons why we still take part in this ritual. We do it as a memorial. We remember Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. We remember his love for us. We remember his sacrifice. And we give thanks for him and what he did for us. You may remember that we said at the beginning of this year that one of the things we felt the Lord wanted us to do was to try to observe communion more often. And Memorial Day seems like a very appropriate time to do that again. As we remember those who gave their lives serving our country, we remember Jesus who gave his life as the suffering servant, as the one who was serving us doing what he did for us. And because it was what we needed, he was thinking of us. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Let's do this for one thing, remembering the love of Jesus. Let's remember why he went to the cross. Not just the fact of it, not just remembering the event itself, not just remembering the beating and the ridicule that he endured, not just remembering the scourging that tore into his flesh, not just remembering the nails in his hands and the nails in his feet, not, not just the agony of his hanging on and, and dying on a cross, and not just the pain of his bearing the sins of the world on his shoulders, but let's remember why. Why? Let's remember that all of this was the result of his love for us. He did it all out of love. He suffered it all because of his great love for you and for me. You know, we remember people for various reasons. Maybe we remember an aunt for her quirkiness. Or we remember an uncle for the gifts that he brought us or sent to us. Or we remember a trusted advisor for the guidance that he gave us or the example he set for us. But the ones who tend to impact us the most are the ones we remember for their love. Maybe a grandmother, a mom, a dad, or someone else. What we remember and appreciate most and probably what affected us most was that person's love for us. And in some way, they communicated that fact to us. They, they showed it. They expressed their love for us. And we remember that. And we hold that person close to our hearts yet today because of it. Maybe they've been gone from this world a long time, but we still hold them close to our hearts. We still remember today because of that. And that's how it should be with Jesus. One of the truths about him that should stand out to us above most others is how much he loves us. And he showed it. He manifested that love through what he went through on our behalf. His suffering, the cross, the bearing of our sins. It was Jesus manifesting his love for us. So let's not forget that. Let's do this, as Jesus put it there. Let's take part in communion, in remembrance that Jesus loved you so much that he gave his body and he shed his blood so that you could have eternal life. Let's also do this 
remembering the sacrifice of Jesus, his sacrifice. We remember the sacrifice of soldiers this Memorial Day, making what we sometimes call the greatest or the ultimate sacrifice, the giving up of their own lives. We think of the sacrifice of their families too, in losing a loved one. And likewise, we remember the sacrifice in relation to Jesus. God gave up his only son for us. Jesus gave his life for us. We sometimes hear the saying that freedom isn't free. It costs something. It costs dearly. And over the years, it has cost some people their lives. So we shouldn't take our freedoms in this country lightly. And we should be concerned when those freedoms are threatened. You know, people gave their lives for us to be free, to be able to gather for worship, for us to have freedom of speech, for us to be free from the control and the tyranny of others. And our spiritual freedom, it isn't free either. Let's not take it for granted. It costs something for us to be able to have a right relationship with God. Oh, we, we freely receive it. It's by grace, but it costs something. It calls something for us to be able to have our sins forgiven. It calls something for us to have peace in our hearts and a home in heaven to look forward to. It wasn't free. It cost Jesus his life. Our freedom was purchased with the priceless, precious blood of Christ. So let's remember that. Let's remember the price that Jesus paid so that we could enjoy the blessings that we have today as children of God. Let's also remember Jesus' willingness and his courage to do this for us. His life wasn't taken from him. Now, Jesus didn't go to the cross kicking and screaming, did he? He didn't try to run away from his sacrifice. He went willingly. He courageously faced the suffering. He knew what was coming, but he ran toward the pain rather than running away from it. He headed toward the trouble that was awaiting for him there in Jerusalem instead of running away from it, going the other direction. You know, there are some questions and concerns about the police response in the shooting there in Texas. There are concerns about police not rushing in and taking action earlier, about some who tried but then retreated. And we may find out more as time goes by, but, but at this point it looks like, you know, maybe some mistakes may have been made in that response, but, you know, it's hard to know without all the information, and, and it's hard to make those calls, you know, when you're there and, and, and don't have all the information yet. But still, you know, we tend to remember those in situations who willingly and courageously, you know, maybe not foolishly, but who willingly put their lives on the line instead of retreating or waiting. Jesus didn't retreat from his challenge. The Bible tells us that he could have called in a host of angels to save him from being crucified, but he refused to accept that way of escape. We applaud the, the courage and the bravery of soldiers who gave their lives. We remember Jesus for similar reasons. He willingly, willingly laid down his life for you and me. He braved the trials and the pain for us. He willingly bore our sins. So do this in remembrance of the Christ who willingly gave himself for your sake. And finally, we observe this memorial. We do this in remembrance of Jesus and his death, and we do it with thankfulness. That word comes up several times in some of our ritual that we normally read and follow on this occasion. But we do it with thankfulness, with gratitude. We're not remembering just in order to stir up sadness and pain. We're not remembering this in order to place blame on Pilate or on the Jews or even on ourselves because of our sins that took Jesus to the cross. We're not remembering in order to open up old wounds. We're remembering in order to stir up our love for him and our gratitude in light of what he's done for us. Jesus didn't tell us to do this so that we could sink in sadness and despair. No, 
We're to do it in order to be thankful and to honor this one who died for us. You know, it's the same with Memorial Day and with other memorials. They can certainly stir up emotions and grief, especially when they represent the loss of a life of a loved one. But we remember not to make ourselves feel bad, but out of respect and gratitude for that person. We do it to honor that person. And that's why we observe this memorial of the Lord's Supper. We do it to honor the one who loved us so much. We do it to honor this one who gave such a sacrifice. We honor him for doing it willingly. We honor him and commit ourselves to loving him in return and living for this one who died for us. I wrote a little poem, if you could call it that, to express some of what we've talked about this morning. So I'd just like to ask you to bow your heads and listen to it as we prepare for communion today. It's titled, A Memorial. We remember the matchless love of the one who came down from above to give his life on the cross for someone like me. We remember his sacrifice. What a cost. Oh, the price, the precious blood of Christ shed for me. We remember his suffering and pain becoming the scapegoat for our gain. He carried that burden of sin for me. We remember his willingness to go to face the onslaught of his foe. He fought and won the victory for me. We remember as we take the bread, as we lift the cup and bow our head. I remember what he did for me. So let's do that as we share in communion this morning. Do this in remembrance of him. Remember, remember what Jesus did for you and be thankful.